Hey everyone. If you're watching this on the day that it comes out, it's Holocaust Memorial Day. And in honor of the victims of that most horrible crime, I'd like to read an extract from 44 Months in Yasenovac by Egon Berger. Yasenovac is uh, not that famous, I think, outside of the former Yugoslavia. It was a extermination camp and concentration camp run by the fascist Ustasha regime who were trying to create an independent Croatia out of the rubble of Yugoslavia. And for a while, there's no doubt about it, it was one of the most horrible places you could uh, possibly be. Serbs, Roma, Bosnians, uh, Croatian opponents of fascism, and of course Jews like Egon were put to death in their thousands, thousands upon thousands. Um, as you can tell from the title of the book, through the twists and turns of fate, poor Egon managed to uh, be there for 44 months, uh, eventually surviving and escaping as the camp was being liberated by Yugoslavian partisans. And it's on the night of his escape that I'd like to uh, pick up poor Egon's tale. When you wander like this in the moonlight, every tree looks like a man and every bush looks like someone squatting in the grass waiting to catch you. I snuck and crawled for over an hour, holding a small knife at the ready. All of a sudden, I saw a human figure hunched on the ground. I came closer and shook him with the knife in my hand. The stooped man didn't move. I thought that he could be one of the prisoners. Perhaps he had been wounded, managed to crawl here and died. I thought about taking his suit because mine was completely soaked. Then I noticed that he was breathing. I held his head and said, If you are a prisoner, don't be afraid. I ran from Kajara as well. When he lifted his head, we recognized each other immediately. It was Stoyan, who had been at Kajara with me for three years. His neck and chest were all covered in blood. He told me that he'd seen the Ustasha all around, but he did not know how to swim, so he had lost all hope of salvation. He drank all the poison which he had with him, but it did not work because he had eaten a lot the night before and had vomited everything up. Then he'd taken a piece of wood because he did not have anything else and started to cut his throat. That's when I'd found him. What a harrowing uh, tale. What a horrible story. When I read that, it, it totally took my breath away. First, because if your preferred option is to slit your throat alone, cold, wet, in the, in the forest at night, just with a stick that you found on the ground, if that's your preferred option, then it, it says everything you need to know about the horrors of Yasenovats and being a prisoner there. Secondly, because my granddad was called Stoyan, and he was also a prisoner of war during World War II. Now, not at Yasenovats, we believe. Uh, he was a German prisoner, not an Astasha prisoner. But I couldn't help but wonder, because we know so little of my granddad's time in prison, I, I just couldn't help but wonder, was that my granddad Stoyan? Was that him? I, I finished the book right there and then. It's not a huge book, but I had to finish the uh, the whole thing. As it would turn out, it wasn't my granddad. There's a picture of Egon and Stoyan uh, with some partisans as they've been liberated from the camp. And uh, it's just not my granddad Stoyan. It's a different one. But it made me think of him, though, and just the absolute horrible time he must have had. You know, indescribably horrible, really. And just how lucky I am to live in the peaceful time that I live in, you know. My life is is just full of so much amazing things that when my granddad was young, well, he was just having a different time, wasn't he? It's, it's impossible to describe. I don't know what happened to Stoyan in this book. Uh, he did survive the war, and I hope that he regained a, a little bit of love for life. You know, I hope he got married 
raised a family, maybe had some grandkids like my granddad Stoyan. Who knows, but that's what I hope. <laughs>